Today, we are celebrating a brand new book launch here on Inspirational Journeys. I have with me Riley Cross, who has just launched her debut novel entitled Disconnected. Welcome to the show, Riley. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm so honored to be here. So why don't you start by introducing yourself? All right. Well, I've been a language arts educator. This is year 11, um, going strong. So I've been teaching a lot of different classes and courses across those 11 years. Um, lately, I've been teaching creative writing. And it's really just been a fabulous journey to like let my students see that not only can you teach, but you can do what you teach. So we've been able to like, I've been able to share my journey with them. Um, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I've got two beautiful little children, um, very active in my community and serving them in whatever way I can, you know, it's just, it's, it's been a journey towards publishing, but publishing is not all that, you know, all that you are as a writer either. Um, it's my biggest hobby, but other hobbies will include, you know, just being a part of my community, serving in different programs, um, just my husband, the teacher as well. So we're just constantly trying to figure out what are some ways that we can really help today's youth and, and push them forward, you know? Right. And it's, yeah. Yeah. And it's really good that you are teaching, not only teaching your creative writing students, but you're also teaching them through example of your own work as well. And, And I like that when, when a teacher has a real life example to, to show to, to use as a for students to use as a model so how did you know when god called you to write the fabulous question so faith is obviously a a pretty much a part of who i am and um i would say you i felt that like urge that calling to write i think i finished my first novel around 14 (laughs) so i mean like it's sort of been a storyteller even like prior to that um I would tell stories to my sisters, my two younger siblings, and it would be like always ending on a cliffhanger. And tomorrow we'll begin part two. (laughs) And it's just always been like storytelling sort of been in my blood, if you will. And then in my teenage years, it became like a place of solace and refuge. And I'd lose myself in my stories, you know. And then as an adult, I got very discouraged. So I quit. There was like a a three-year period in my life where I just didn't write at all um and I just was like it's not worth it I'm not writing anymore and thankfully I was able to sort of come out of that place and and rediscover like the joy of writing like it's not about fame and it's not about um it's not about all of these things or validation it's it's about writing for the joy of your writing and then just letting that naturally see where it goes and that's been one of the cool pieces i think to making it now to publication it's ah. just back to that joy and that's that's uh that's what my publisher said. i'm curious now are you gonna uh, oh i'm sorry no no i'm curious are you gonna go back and revisit those old books those books that you wrote when you were a kid <laughs> i called them my bones um they are the skeleton on which i experimented and learned how to write wow. I think we're gonna leave them fit in uh, i'm not really sure if i want them to come back out but i have like toyed with the idea of revisiting those worlds you know as you know looking back like what you wrote as a child and then what you write as an adult um but for now i just sort of leave them as like lovely little memories Oh, yeah, those may have been for you. Like some of the books and some of the scenes that I have are basically more for me. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. So um, what was your process like when you wrote this book? Did you outline or did you pants the whole thing? Oh, I'm such pants? a pantser. Uh, so I tried. Uh, I'm a pantser who tried to be a flotser. So I like actually mapped out the entire how it was going to end. And then I wrote the book and it didn't end anything like the written piece. So I I, I attempted to correct my uh, fly by the seat of your pants method, but um didn't work. The one thing I did find helpful, though, I've been reading Dave's a cat writes a novel and I had been reading mm-hmm. that prior to really 
getting the urge to actually finish, to stop stalling and start finishing. And that one was really fabulous. It covered plot beats and, and like things that you can use to kind of carry out the story. So it was half and half, I guess. It was more like suggestions of what kind of beats are typical or traditional of this particular story type. And I used that to help me kind of like curb those fly by the seat of your pants moments. It was almost the best of both word, worlds because I love the randomness that writing, just not knowing where it's going to take you, what like creativity, like what that unleashes. But also you do need a little bit of a structure. I definitely paid for it in the back end with the editing. Um, when my editor was like, wait, when did this happen? I'm like, oh no, I had to go back and fix it because that's <laughs> one thing. But now I'm like, if I try to write again, which I'm I'm planning on starting something, but like if I try again, we need or we need a method. So I think it's just all about experimenting. And I it might even be different from book to book, you know? Yeah. But what worked for me were like ideas, like plot points, but then allowing some of that like wild nature to to fill in the gaps. Ah. I love that. And you and we, I think we just coined a term, coined a new term here on inspirational journeys. For those of us who plot a little plant, pants a little, NaNoWriMo calls us planters, but you just coined a term plotsers. I love it. Yeah. I love it. We're plotsers. I aspire to be is someone who like has it all written out and knows what's going to happen. And then just I don't know. I kind of picture it in my head like those old time movies where you got like all the sticky notes up and they're all connected and it's the crime scene and you figure it out mm -hmm. and just figure it off and like write the scene today because the web is already figured out. I mean, that's like who I aspire to be, but I'm, I'm thinking I just need, I'm the kind of person that also has a junk drawer in my house and I, it's not because I have one, it's because I need one. Um, <laughs> I can't seem to I can't seem to exist without some sort of random space in my life. Have, so. Yeah, you got to have a place for all your flotsam and jetsam. Uh, I function better with the junk drawer. Um, so unfortunately, <laughs> I have one of those. Our junksum. <laughs> I call it the drawer of death. I opened it up and I'm like, everything is somewhere. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's just how my mind works. I think everybody has a junk drawer. <laughs> No, but most people seem to need to get rid of it in order to function. You need it to function. <laughs> the messy writer. <laughs> oh my god! It kind of shows in, in my writing a little bit too because it's <laughs> um, I need that that spur of creativity. If I've got it all figured out, it's almost like I'm bored with it before I can start writing it. So I kind of almost need that. So I need some structure, and then I also need some moments where I just let myself have free reign. Ah, okay. So, and for me, I kind of pants part of the first draft of the second book that I'm working on. Um, After I get the beta reads done and get my book to the editor. But I go back and I, I do my, I'm a... I'm a crocheter too, so I I have this thing called the plot stitch that I'm method that I'm working on, and I go back and pattern out my book once I get it done. If I don't start doing that anyway, just to see where I am. Um, but so, do you have any like tips or takeaways you would like to share with the audience today? Absolutely, and I, yes, it's amazing that you asked that. Um. For me, I try to write as I would like to read, like a book I would like to read. So I try to actually take note of the things I dislike in books that I've read. And for me, I don't love a lot of description. I am a dialogue heavy writer. I enjoy that. Um, I also like the way it looks visually on the page because I feel like I can kind of breeze through the story and it feels like everything's flowing and I'm into it. So I do try to incorporate more dialogue um, just so like it has that sort of like, I'm always worried about the pace of the reading. Um, the other thing I love to do is try to reveal the character through the dialogue as much as possible or the details that I do describe, I like them to reflect something back um, about the character or the situation. I try to be intentional with the details and I don't wanna just throw things in for fun. Um, 
the hard part about being a pantser is sometimes we do throw a lot of things in there. And then at the end, I try to make, I try to gather all those threads back up. So every character that I introduce in my story, if they have a name, um, I'm trying, I try to very, very much try to bring them back in the end in some way. I wanted sort of that full circle arc. So I try to make all of the threads come back. Um, and I feel like that's something that we should do intentionally anyway. It may not happen on the first draft or the second. By the third, you want to gather all those strings together because it mm. really makes it more powerful. Okay. Um, I listened to a comedian say once that the punchlines become funnier if repeated. So I think the same principle holds in writing that if you reuse elements and, and reintroduce characters that you've introduced once before, that they're not just throwaways, they almost become even better the second or the third time that they're reintroduced into the storyline. So I kind of like to bring them back as much as possible, that it's not just a throwaway scene, that these details matter in some way. Ah, now I like that. Um, <clears throat> so... Oh my gosh, I was going to ask you a question and I just forgot it. Anyway, but, um, so tell us a little bit about the book. Oh, okay. Love that. Um, so Disconnected is a dystopian YA sci-fi world. It's in this world, all people are genetically modified and selected to be born. Kiara is an anomaly. She was not genetically modified. She happened. And because of this, she's given a lower status than most of the other citizens. Uh, there's a stain on her family name, and if she doesn't behave, if her, um, she doesn't like toe the line and everything, then her family line is supposed to be sterilized. And I know that sounds kind of dramatic, but that's where it is. Like there, there's been enough rule breakers from you toe the line. At the end of high school, however, she's she's been proving herself to be brilliant beyond her station. So not only is she hated for her anomaly status, but she's also hated because um, due to her intelligence, she's in honors classes, which means somebody else who is genetically modified to be intelligent has been kicked out of that path. And high school is everything because if you don't pass with honors classes, you're not eligible to uh, join the higher levels of society afterwards. There's no college. It's high school is in a way college. And at the end of high school, you either make it or you don't. They also cut open your brain and insert technology into your mind so you can connect with what they call the data stream or Wi-Fi. You're able to, your mind is able to meld with the internet. This doesn't work for everyone. And uh, many teenagers have been known to die. So you, you literally high school makes or breaks you. And I feel like it really resonates with why a readers, especially as they're getting towards that end of their year in high school, it feels like all those decisions and all those pressures are on you. And it feels like this is it. This is my make or break it moment. Um, and so we just sort of heighten it up with the dystopian threat of death looming over you, the ever watching artificial intelligence deciding whether or not you are good enough to be a citizen or whether or not you should be a basically a bag of body parts for others who could use your heart your lungs your 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 body parts for other um purposes because if you're not a citizen of unity then your only service is to be of use to someone else Ooh, and so I'm... that's sort of the living on the edge of a knife and that's where mm. kiara finds herself um, she's also investigating a mystery of what happened to her family. Why is there such a pattern of rule breakers and, and defiance and um, just sort of discovering what it is to be human in an AI perfection driven world. Mm. And I've got a book to recommend to you since you like reading oh. and writing that stuff. Um, Path of Totality, Tal bleh, Path of Totality by Heather Creaky. It's a it's a dystopian. I will probably yeah. love it. I'm a Hunger Games. Uh, I love the Hunger Games. Uh, I've read The Testing is a recent book, and I'm 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 really digging into Ready Player One right now. I just all of those dystopian sort of stories. The Giver is my absolute favorite. All of the books in that series by Lois Lowry. So these are all sort of my 
inspirations, if you will, for building the world. Wow. Yeah. Path of totality would be definitely for you because Probably. it's a YA, but it's, it's, it's definitely, uh, I, I don't want to say too much. I had Heather on the, on Heather Creaky on the show, uh, last year, but I definitely do recommend that. And for those of you sci-fi fans out there, if you haven't listened to that episode, go back and check it out. If you haven't watched the video, go back and check it out because it that, that book was, I'm not really personally, I'm not really a big sci-fi or just a, or dystopian kind of uh, fan, but I couldn't put that book down. <laughs> Yeah, some dystopians grab a hold of you. I think the key with making, especially if you're not into sci-fi or dystopian or those terms kind of frighten you, I think the key to making it accessible is bringing like a really unusual world to the forefront, but also not like hammering the problems. Like it can't be so obvious that this is all about discovering humanity. Like it's, it's you got to feel like you're in the story. That's what I really love about the Giver series. Mm-hmm. Um you know that there's tech, but their tech isn't necessarily so predominant or so specific that you need to analyze every piece of it or understand how certain components work. You just sort of feel the story. You know, you can feel that watchful eye without having to know how it all is strung up to the Wi-Fi or how, you know, like you don't need to know all the technicalities of it. You just feel the story. And that's what I try to do is make it accessible where it doesn't feel like you need to know a lot about tech but at the same time, you understand it. Right. And uh, it's all about story and story matter. So, okay. So where can people find you online? Oh, I use the same uh, handle on pretty much everything. It's the little at writing by Riley. It is my TikTok, my Twitter, my Instagram. <laughs> Um, I think I even put it on Facebook. So like, can you just put in at writing by Riley? That's my little and you can find me across the platforms with the single handle okie doke and um would you like wait do you have a take a um call to action you'd like to leave the listeners with maybe a challenge or some sort of takeaway or whatever it's it's up to you what you want to do but the the next step that can take after after walking away from this interview well if you're a writer i would say the step that you want to take is minimization like you want to start writing fewer words <laughs> um that's why I love that you said you're you have poetry and everything like that like poetry teaches us how to say less with more or say more with less yeah um, that switch around say more with less and I think as writers we tend to get too wordy I like micro fiction contests um even like little even 50 words get into your character's head what are they thinking right now and that really brings out the beauty of your writing and sharpens it if you're a reader and you're just sort of like thinking about writing or you just more enjoy reading, I like to think about the techniques as I read. What is it that I enjoy the most about this story? And and just sort of that way you can talk about it as well and you can review it for the writers in a really beautiful way. Um, just like, oh, I really enjoyed this particular arc or what, like looking for those techniques. I love the detail in this story. And it just allows you to not only discuss the book but I think it also allows you to see what books have common commonalities. So you're reading more things that you enjoy because I, I, I can't put a book down, but if I don't enjoy it, it's, it's, it's hard for me to get to the end. So I like to look for things that I love so I can have more of those experiences. Right. So would you like to, cl- do you have a Bible verse you want to share with us really quickly? Um. I really like, right now the reference is kind of escaping me, but it's the apples of gold and pictures of silver. Um, for re- That psalm always struck me because it's about the beauty of language describing what we see in the natural world or being able to see through those colors or those objects and items, words that describe it. And I, I just always felt like that, or my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. That's another psalm. These are all sort of like little phrases that kind of rattle around in my head. It's just that ability to write. It's a gift and and should be cultivated. So if you have it or you're wondering, do I have the call of writing? Just go ahead and try it. Like, you know, it it is a gift and open up. Don't be nervous about it. Just go ahead and experience writing. Yeah. Would you like to close us out in prayer? Uh, sure. Um, dear God, we just want to 
come together today and just thank you for the gift of language, for the fact that we're able to discuss writing and creativity and how you've given us that spark inside. And if anyone, you know, is afraid of that gift, I just ask, hopefully this episode will inspire them to think about cultivating that and opening it and not being afraid of the sparks that you've placed inside each of us. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So thank you so much for joining me on Inspirational Journeys today, Riley. Guys, go out and get disconnected if you definitely, if you're sto- dystopian and sci-fi fans. And we challenge you today to go out there and read to get inspired, write something inspiring, and share your creation with the world. For when you've touched one life, you've touched thousands. Thanks for tuning in to Inspirational Journeys. Thanks for joining us. And tune in next week. I have a solo episode with a special treat and for the podcast listeners. And I will also possibly have another interview coming up. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, remember, your story matters. Thanks for joining me and have a blessed day.